I, yes, we are with the two that we have, right, Loris? Yes, sir. We are good to start. Notify everyone we are recording this meeting and I would like to call the special meeting for the executive finance committee to order. Get started. Director Hayes, would you like to say a few words? Mr. Chairman, at this time, no comments or updates. Thank you. Um, Before you proceed, Jason, I don't see the recording on yet, so we might want to make sure that, Loris, I know you were going to indicate that we're going to have the recording started, but I think Jason said it, so if we could just have the, is the meeting recording? I don't see it started yet. Uh, yes, it's it in is. progress. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Thank you, David. All right. And for those of us, for those that are doing research a hundred years from now, doing writing a term paper on this meeting, they'll say, gosh, they discuss whether it was recorded or not. But uh, that could be the highlight for us in some history book. Anyway, Cynthia, thanks for taking some time to come on. And um, you know, this is that required brief to do those budget modifications before July one. So really, I just want to hand it over to you, Greg, and let's get get going what we need to get briefed on. Great. Well, I'll just uh, echo the thanks and appreciation for everyone making the time tonight. Like I said, I don't think this will be uh, a lengthy meeting. Uh, we, we at the last meeting, you might recall, the board um, gave uh, the executive committee the authority, and this is in our bylaws, the board can empower the executive committee to act on behalf of the board. We didn't at the time have the budget numbers for um, contract extensions. Um, we had just received our allocations and the board had first approved those allocations and then gave us permission to engage in contract negotiations with our sub recipients. Since that time, you know, we decided that we're going to, we're going to move to extend the existing contracts. And these are the PY 21 contracts that the board has already approved in the past. We're going to be extending those contracts by an additional 2 months to get us through the end of August. Um, the goal with that short extension. Is is to allow us the time that's necessary for the county council to review and ultimately authorize the use of PY 2022 funds. As you know, we only received those those notification about those allocations just a couple of weeks ago, and so we have to go through a request for legislation process, and then a roughly six to eight week uh, period that oftentimes it takes for the council to to ultimately go through its its approval process. So once we have those funds authorized. At that point, we moved to renew the contracts with the all of the current sub recipients, which the board voted on the last meeting. But we're not at that period yet where we can officially do the one year renewals. We have to extend the existing contracts with the existing funds that we have, the PY21 funds. So um, you should have received by, uh, previously from Loris this, this afternoon. A uh, an updated draft agenda, or not a draft agenda, but the firm, the finalized agenda, as well as the uh, budget sheet um, that we'll review now. So let me just try to link that up real quick. Actually, I need Ethan if you could give me permission to, or David to share the uh, screen. I need to flash up the the budget sheet, but I don't currently have that permission. Thank you. Okay, Jason, if you give me a thumbs up, if you can see it, can you? Okay. So these, um, these, these contracts you see in the left hand column, it's, it's delineating each contract that we currently have. The organization is the abbreviated, um, Notation on the far left. So FWCA is Family Workforce Centers of America, EC is Employment Connection, and IISTL is International Institute of uh, Metropolitan St. Louis. And the, the what's next to them are the indications of the program itself. So don't dislocate a worker. OSO stands for One Stop Operator. OSY is Out of School Youth. ISY is In School Youth. OSY is the other. This is the Employment Connection has the other Out of School Youth contract. And then the adult LEP is the adult uh, limited English proficiency contract. So what you see going across the sheet is essentially the original PY 20 contract amount. Cause remember we essentially wrote 2 year contracts. 
So we're, we then modify the contracts at the year point when we receive new funding. And that's what you see in the column right next to it, which is the modification one PY 21 contract amount. So what we're trying to do is keep a running total as we go across the sheet here of the different modifications and where we are today. So modification one, what PY 21 contract amount was, was the modification that we got to at the renewal point or not the renewal point, but the uh, one year point. And then the modification two, it, you'll notice that these are the amounts that were approved at the very last board meeting, um, which was a special board meeting we had on June 17th. So you might recall that at that meeting, we had a couple budget modifications to make to account for the Accenture Federal uh, Services Work Experience Program. That's included in the 78300 here that was approved by the board. And then the in-school youth program, there was a modification of about 182 thousand six hundred dollars and that was to cover uh, a variety of programming for the in-school youth program including additional work experience dollars um, primarily and so that was something again that's already been approved so we're not focused on this modification to amount where we are today is looking at modif this this final column here before the total which is modification three um, and that's the py 21 extension amount so again this is the two-month extension this is funds that we're going to be proposing that the executive committee uh, vote to endorse on behalf of the board that's recommending uh, modifications to again the PY 21 count one more modification to the PY 21 contracts at which point when we all convene again in August as a board we'll be voting on the renewal contract amounts so we'll come up with some new amounts for that and that will cover the the term that will take us through the end of June of next year but this this modification three is taking us through uh, August of this year and these amounts were not determined um, arbitrarily by board staff. We met with our fiscal uh, team. We also engaged in, in the necessary discussion with our subrecipients for each of these programs to look at what their needs were. We also evaluated what their existing funding levels were and how much they had available yet to spend on the existing contract they had. And so, these amounts were proposed in a number of ways. I think most of the amount, most of these amounts, we actually gave the subrecipients what they asked for and justified by budget narratives. Um, a lot of the the funding that you see here, some of these are sizable amounts. Specific, specifically, this one seventy five thousand uh, for the adult and dislocated worker. That's our largest program in terms of staff, and that's where a lot of our WIOA enrollments come from. Is that adult and dislocated worker program? Um, and then the employment connection is a substantial amount as well, the 140,000. Uh, and that was again, looking at their existing spending uh, as well as the increased enrollments that they have in their, uh, in their out of school youth program and looking at what was needed to cover both staff as well as um, uh, work experience dollars for the, again, the increased enrollments that they have. Um, you'll notice that the limited English proficiency has zero. So that kind of stands out if I were you looking at it. Um, why is that the case? Well, again, in looking at the, the budgets uh, and the available budgets that that the subrecipients still have, we noticed that there was still a substantial amount of funds available for the limited English proficiency uh, contract for International Institute. The sheet that I'm looking at has, has about $89,477 left on that contract that they haven't spent yet. So they haven't requested additional funding at this time, and we think that's sufficient to get them through the next two months. Um, if there is some adjustments and that's needed at some point, we all convene again, and if you can hardly believe, I can hardly believe it, but if you can believe it, we convene again at the first Friday of August, we can review that need if there is one for International Institute. But right now, it seems that they have sufficient funds to get them through the next uh, two months, and they're gonna be, working to recruit uh, some additional staff to staff that program effectively. Um, they've had significant turnover this past year. Uh, some staff have departed. Chelsea uh, Hand, as you all know, uh, she, she left the International Institute and she was often the one most engaged um, in the WIOA work. So they're looking to find a replacement for her position as well as to uh, find some additional staff. Um, and then you see in the far right, the total columns that, that basically total out all the contract amounts, if you consider the, um, the modifications. So, Loris, did I miss anything with that explanation? And then we'll open it for, for questions from our committee members. But, Loris, did I miss anything? anything no, sir, that you very, 
Very thorough. Okay. okay, I see uh Dr. Manning, you're with us too. Any any not putting you on the spot, but if you have any thoughts or anything that you wanted to add to this too, just wanted to give you the opportunity. No thoughts. You gave a very uh very thorough, very thorough assessment. Okay, thank you, Dr. Manning. And then I see uh Chris Horn. Chris Horn. You see anything that we need to cover? Chris Horn is representing our fiscal unit at tonight's call. Doesn't seem to have any <laughs> any comments at this time, but if you do, Chris, feel free to let us know. So what questions, Cynia or Jason, do you have about um, the, the modifications here? Or even Director Hayes, if you have any questions about these amounts and what we're recommending. So, Greg, I do have one question, and this is in regards to the International Institute. I recognize that they haven't requested any additional funding at this time, but is that something that is initiated by us to inquire about whether they need additional funding or we wait for them? I heard you say that we may be looking at this early August to approve mm -hmm. if, they, if they request additional funding. So, how, how does that process work? Is it initiated by them or us, or are we just? Um, yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Well. So, yeah. So I'll answer your question. So immediately upon approving um, the the uh, opportunity for us to engage in contract negotiations, we set up meetings with um, International Institute FWCA and Employment Connections, and we had an initial what we called a preliminary conversation to update them one on the fact that we would be looking at renewing contracts with each of them and then also had a discussion around the need to extend uh, for an additional two months. We met with Blake Hamilton at the International Institute and he's he's really the one that has the most hands-on role right now with these programs. And in that conversation, he didn't indicate a need for any additional funds. And we noted that we would be working to look, we would be looking at their current available budget to determine you know what what those levels look like and ultimately coming up with some new award amounts, um, potentially that, that would meet their needs. We haven't since then uh, followed up with him after that initial conversation. He did not raise any, any concerns with the existing amounts that they had. Um, and so we, we felt like it was sufficient to, to know that they still had 80,000 80, plus uh, to, to basically spend over the next um, two months and given their their current expenditure uh, rate uh, by month, it looks like they, they've they been averaging around $6,000, $7,000 a month. And so that's a sizable portion that ultimately will likely have to add to their renewal contract if they don't spend it in the next two months. But no, he did not He did not indicate that there's any need for funding. Loris, you were part of that conversation too. Do you, do you recall um, any other comments related to their budget being further modified. Uh, no, the, the only the only thing that Blake uh, did note was that they are in the process of of looking to hire new staff, and so there might be some increased spending um, regarding that. But other than that, they haven't hired anyone yet. Um, and like Greg, Greg said, they have a pretty substantial uh, portion of their budget still remaining. Uh, as a matter of fact, they didn't uh, fully expend their PY uh, 20 budget until I think earlier this year. So they have they have still a, a pretty substantial amount to go. Hey, can I give some? Hey, it's Doc, it's Doctor Manning. Uh, everyone, uh, can I give a little background on the um, the issues surrounding the spending uh, with International Institute and may help uh, answer Sam's question. Um, sure. we, we just trained, uh, they got a new staff member, but it's not a Chelsea position. He is a case manager. Uh, we had training with him last week. And uh, their issue is that the population that they serve, they're having trouble. Their clients won't give them the information needed. Uh, for the enrollments, you know, they, they don't want to give up their income information things. So, so they're having real trouble just get even getting their clients in. So, uh, and I, I'm pretty, I'm almost positive Blake is basing his decision on how many staff, you know, to allow and things like that on how many people they can get in. 
they're still having trouble with recruitment. So that's been an ongoing issue with them for about a year now. And uh, when they when they did lose their staff, they lost their staff all at once. You know, they had like four team members just, you know, uh, and they never could replace them. So so they're having some real difficulties. So that's yeah, almost they would they they won't have any trouble, you know, with their existing budget that they currently have. But we are working on those issues with them. Uh, we worked with the guy they hired last week. Um, and so I do believe, you know, by August, they'll have some movement. And I'll and just I say, think, oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Laura. Oh, no, no, go ahead, Laura. Say that, that, you know, during some of those very issues, um, Dr. Manning, that, that you just stated were the issues that um, Blake cited as well. So I think that you're right in that they are very aware of what their challenges are and they are coming up with strategies and, and looking at ways that they can address that, you know, recruiting uh, clients, recruiting, uh, recruiting, you know, employees. So they're, they're looking at all that kind of stuff. So I think you're absolutely right, Dr. Manning. Absolutely. Thank you. And I'll just add, thank you, Dr. Manning for that, uh, that those comments and Loris as well. I'll just add too that, you know, we, we urge Blake to think about program solutions that will best meet the needs of the clients that we're serving that also fully leverage what WIOA allows. As you, as you all know, we've been trying some new programs, whether it's incumbent worker training or, um, the adult work experience program that we launched with Accenture federal services and that we're uh, going to look to expand with other partners. These are programs that historically St. Louis County hadn't offered, but that are responsive to the local area needs. And one thing I challenged Blake with was knowing that it's been all over the news that the international Institute is really working to uh, address some of the refugee, cri you know, the refugee crisis that we've seen across the or across the world. And then looking at St. Louis as a key welcoming uh, entity for for refugees. How do we support the Afghan refugees, for instance, who are who are now in in stable housing, but who still need access to good employment opportunities? And so we talked about the need to really look at what are the needs of the population that you're serving, and then look at how we design enrollment targets, program solutions to meet their needs, because we don't want to just just allow them to have the funds and then not expect that there's some kind of turn in, in the results that that our board expects. And as Dr. Manning noted, we're working with their staff to train them and to um, address some of those issues. But as part of the next phase, when we look at contract renewals, part of that process will include a risk assessment with all of our subrecipients. And that'll be an assessment that we provide to the board and that we provide to this committee that looks at you know what what are some of the challenges they're facing, and then how do we, as a board, develop some strategies, accountability tools, to uh, provide the most support to our subrecipients and improving performance and outcomes. And so we've already teed up that conversation with him, uh, and he acknowledges the the need to increase enrollments and to get some staff to really support the programmatic work. Um, but that was a part of our conversation as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Jason or Howard, do you have any questions? Real quick, do you see it? So are the, <clears throat> is the legislation already in front of the county council? Will we be done by August? That That is, um, we did confirm just this week that um, I think, I, Loris, I don't know if it's actually gone on the official agenda for next uh, Tuesday's uh, meeting. If, actually, are they, they're on recess next Tuesday, I believe. Yeah, they're on recess. Right? They'll, yeah. they'll reconvene on the 12th. Yeah, that's a good question. So we've we filed the, I believe we filed the request for legislation, that paperwork, but whether it won't actually be on the agenda likely for the first time until, um, the 12th of July, unless it's on the agenda tonight and Loris, can you confirm whether or not, you know, if it's on the agenda tonight, I don't, I do not know. Off the top I of my did head. not see I it. I that. did look on the agenda and I did not see it. So I sent a, a message to Tanisha just to make sure that um, it had gotten routed that way. I believe it has. I know there was a, 
there was a miscalculation or mistake on it. We corrected that. Um, so I think it went forward, but I don't have a, a hundred percent confirmation on that, but I did send an email to Tanisha tonight. So hopefully she'll be able to give me that answer tomorrow. So I see Jason, I'm looking at the calendar. I see about seven week, seven weeks, not including next uh, Tuesday when they're on recess for them to move the piece of legislation through. And I think again, in the past it's taken six to eight weeks. The other thing that we have at, um, at our disposal is the fact that the board is meeting again in August. So if there's an if there's a need, and hopefully there's not a need to further extend these contracts beyond the end of August, but if there is a need to do that, we'll have an opportunity for the executive committee to meet in the first Friday of August, and then the board uh, to meet again. I think the 24th is what I'm looking at on my calendar of August. Um, but that my take is that we do have enough room, even considering that this may not appear for the first time on the council agenda until the 12th. But Loris, you track legislation. I hate to keep putting you on the spot, Loris, but if you can give us a sense of timing, do you think seven weeks is sufficient or should we be looking to extend um, the term beyond the end of August into maybe September to be safe? I think that the seven weeks will be sufficient. Um, because even um, you can't actually charge anything to it until two weeks after it's enacted. So that's the eight weeks, but we can begin writing contracts and all that once it's uh, finally approved. So once it goes through the final passage of the council, we can begin to, to write contracts on that money. Which is about six weeks out. And what we could do, Jason, is if 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 you're um, uncomfortable, if we're collectively uncomfortable with this, then we, I mean, in terms of the timing, what we could do is still write the contracts. Um, we've kind of we've kind of decided at by the end of August makes sense because we expected at that point we'd be able to use the the PY 2022 funds, but we could write the contracts to go into September by an additional week or two. Um, and I don't think the change, the funding levels would, would, would be needed, uh, or would would change so much in that uh, two week period, right? I don't think they would need substantially more money. But even again, if they needed additional funds based on what we're seeing in terms of tracking, spending, and program needs, we meet again in the first part of August, where we could approve additional modifications to the current budgets. But we're we're going to closely follow the money and fo and closely look at what their levels look like. So we'd be able to make an informed decision by that first Friday. But if we wanna be safe, we could, rather than have the contracts terminate in the last uh, day of August, we could look at extending for uh, an additional couple of weeks to allow us some more time to get those renewal contracts in place. I I think that's, that's that should be an option. Yep. Yeah, I think, you know, in August, I was just really more concerned from the from the whole board perspective is that, you know, once the legislation is like, you know, once it's finally passed, like Laura says, you still have the two week lag from the date that the county executive signs it. So it's like, we still know the numbers for a board to do the appropriate board actions that allows you to put it in, you know, we would have the numbers and it'd be approved through the, through the council is kind of what I was thinking. So we wouldn't have to do We'll do another special good board meeting. That's that's my right. Concern. Yeah, we can start to uh, we can start to negotiate contracts or write contracts on that money even before it's enacted. That's what the county counselor's office has told me that once it reaches final passage, then we can go ahead and draft contracts and all that. They don't actually. You can't encumber any funds until after the, the um, you know, after the two weeks, but up until that point, we can write contracts on it. Okay, thanks. So, 
Um, before we take a vote on this too, and I do want to take a, I don't think we typically take votes at executive committee meeting, but since the board did authorize you all to review the award amounts, I think it would be appropriate just for the record to note um, your votes for these award amounts. Um, but before we do that, I meant to say when we initially presented these uh, award amounts that there is some variance from what was originally posted um, with the 24 uh, our notice that we put out through our public notice page. And that was because we, we received some budgets um, from one of our sub recipients uh, only this morning, essentially some budget narrative to proposing some of the amounts. So we didn't have time to get the 24 hour um, posting. Now that is still okay based on our county counselor's opinion that we can have add ons to our uh, to whatever we presented in our board packet or agenda prior to that, prior to the meeting, as long as we preface it by noting that for the record and in the meeting minutes of this meeting, that we did modify uh, the amount. I think one or two of the amounts on here, Loris, you can probably tell the the committee what was actually changed. But I think it was the OSY, FWCA. Um, we didn't originally have that sixty thousand there. Um, but I don't want to speak out of turn. Loris, can you can you tell us maybe what what the variance was? Yes, uh, that's the only variance, Greg, is the sixty thousand for FWCA. Once we re received their narrative and exactly how they were going to use those funds, um, and we also had to make sure that um, the amounts that we were given both the youth programs, out of school youth and in school youth where we had received the waiver from the state that gave us um, the okay to divide our funds up with a 50-50 split instead of 75-25. So that's one of the reasons why, even though the board had approved the 182,600, uh, 182, if you all remember from the board meeting, Vanessa, I mean, Melissa Wokamp asked if we met that threshold. So we had to submit a request for a waiver and we just received that this morning. So that was another reason that we had to wait and um, modify the budgets once we received notification. So once we got the information from the subrecipient and the information from the state, then we were able to go forward with the amounts that we have. Right, so again, the only variance, thank you, Loris, that, and that's a great reminder about that waiver. That waiver, by the way, is in effect through June of 2023. So we have a year to use that waiver. Uh, they have some requirements of us to exercise that, and that's really just to provide quarterly updates on how the waiver is being implemented. And we can share some success stories and why that way and how that waiver is having an impact. The waiver is changing, as Loris noted, the expenditure rate from 75% requirement for OSY 25% for ISY, uh, to 50% for each program in school youth, 50% for out of school youth. And this allows us to, I think, have some flexibility in designing programs that um, are responsive to our community. There, there should be a greater push that our board, I think, has on especially supporting youth that are enrolled in our high schools and helping them with career pathway development opportunities. And we'll be working with our sub recipients on that program. But that waiver allows us some flexibility, so we don't have to spend exactly 50 50, but it, uh, we can't, we, we have to operate within that framework, right? So we can't, um, we can't stray too far from that. But the idea is that we don't have to spend 75% of our funds on out of school youth, um, that we have greater flexibility to, to use more funds to support the in school youth population as well. But again, as Loris noted, the only change from the public public notice. That was posted 24 hours in advance of this meeting was that the 60,000 that you see in modif in the modification three column on the far right side um, for FWCA OSY that 60,000 was not there, so the total changed. Um, and again, that was based on the fact that we received uh, the narratives uh, this morning that we believe after reviewing them justified uh, that additional 60,000. And again, we consulted with the county counselor's office, Matt Callahan, on that, and he and he said that we could add it on tonight and just make note of it for the record. But we needed to make sure that we stated that.
Okay. Okay. So I guess do we have to say that it's so noted, and do we what what's uh, what's our next step now? I don't unless Cindy has got other questions. I don't have any more. I don't have any yeah. additional questions. I have no questions. So that has been noted for the record, and I would just advise uh, Mr. Chair if you want to get a motion uh, from a member of the committee to uh, accept, if you would like to all accept and vote in support of the mo proposed modifications, you can do that in its entirety, or you can go individual contract. But that's that. I'll leave that choice up to to you, uh, Mr. Chair. There's no no, no requirement Let's that call you call for a motion. We'll see what motion comes from the floor. Um, <laughs> okay. I'll pull all the committee members. Uh, do we have a, can we get a motion? And if whoever gets to make that motion could decide whether we do one vote or many votes. So I, I move that we um, accept the modification 3 uh, PY 21 extension with stated notations around the modified modified amounts. And I would propose that we just approve the total. Oh, I'll As opposed to going. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Be opposed. Okay. And the record show that the committee has approved it. Thank and you. Just, just for the record too, Jason, Cynia said aye, but you would you say aye as well? <laughs> I said aye as well too. We said oh, it at the same I, time. I didn't, hear, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. I just wanted to make sure for the record we had. We tied. Yeah, we tied. I vote for I'm Jason. Waiting, I'm waiting for the maze to speak up. <laughs> you know, hundred okay. years from now, just think a hundred years from now. Right. Thanks, Greg. Because I, I was getting ready to call him by name. name. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any right. He's doing a roll call. roll call. That yeah. looks. It'll be hard. <laughs> All right. So we have on the record Cynia and Jason's votes uh, of I in support of the modification. So thank you both. For doing that and, um, and the motion carries right, Laura. So we are officially approved to go ahead and begin these contracts. Um, these modified extensions uh, for the 2, the 2 months, plus some change possibly with our sub recipients. Well, I, I just got notice from. Um, from um, our host that Vanessa Parker Lewis was in the. Um, attendee thing so I asked him to please let her into the uh, meeting so if we want to see I'm not sure if she's made it in yet I'm I'm unmuted now my apologies for my tardiness welcome thank you Vanessa thank you all right Vanessa welcome thanks for joining us thank you So, uh, Vanessa, thank yes, thank you for joining us. And what we just did uh, prior to you joining us was uh, Cindy and Jason voted to support the uh, modification amounts for extending contracts with our sub recipients for an additional two months um, so that we can get the county council legislation process to authorize us to use the new funding amounts that we'll have available to us with the PY 2022 funds. So we're only extending for a couple months with the on the existing contracts of PY21 uh, funds and PY21 scopes of work for those contracts. Uh, with the approval of, of if you're looking at the screen, Vanessa, you'll see modification three column PY21 extension amount. Uh -huh. Those are the amounts. Those are the amounts that we're, we've more or less approved, adding to the existing contracts that they have to get them through those two months, and and we determine these amounts. Uh, both by reviewing their current spending levels, their average monthly spending levels, and then also inviting dialogue with each of the sub recipients to get their recommendations to us in terms of what budget they felt they needed to to deliver the programs. And so we feel the numbers were were determined um, appropriately and that they will get us through the next two months and provide uh, the services necessary to youth and, and adults that we serve. Um, so, Jason and Cynthia just voted in support of those uh, modification amounts, but do you have any questions about that before we. We move on or any any I know I just kind of gave you a quick overview. And then thanks but, for asking. I don't have any questions. I was muted 
but I could hear the the discussion oh. and I heard the motion as well. Um, I just okay. uh, the host had to unmute me. I I'm joining for my phone, so kind of uh, been strapped and just now able to join. So I did hear that portion though. So thank you though for okay tapping it. Okay, great. Well, then can we count you you as a as an, an I vote I. as well? Support? Okay, yes. <laughs> an, an I. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, there's only one other item that I think it's really just an it's 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 more or less an update for all of you. Um, one thing that I promised the board at the last meeting uh, was that we would provide an update on our strategy for the COVID-19 humanitarian grant. Um, the board voted to allow us to extend participation in that program for an additional year that would run up to June of 2023. But um, our expenditure rate isn't isn't where we want it to be. Um, it's around 30% of the funds that we currently have for that program, and our enrollments are around 50% of what our target requirements are. So, we we felt it was important to um, at least notify the the executive committee as well as the board, and we can follow up with a with a note to the board uh, by email this week, kind of sharing that strategy document. Now, the strategy document was actually, if you looked at the agenda, it was embedded within the agenda. It was um, something that you could click on as a link that was in the agenda. And I'm having trouble pulling it up right now. Let me see if I can get back onto my, um, in my email real quick. Did, um, has, that, has everyone seen that document? Or, or no, Jason, have you seen it? No, Cindy, have you seen it yet? Or Vanessa? Okay, so I, nobody's I, seen it yet. Yeah, or unless Vanessa has. <laughs> no, I have not. Okay, so let me let me go ahead and and get into my email real quick, and I'll pull it up for you. Greg, is this also going to require a vote? No. No, this is this is just an update. The board has already voted uh, for us to be able to extend the. The grant, we just thought it was appropriate to to make sure that we had um, the strategy itself on um, on the on the record and shared with the board as as a courtesy to the board to let them know how we in, we intend to handle the program uh, moving forward. All due respect, I'm going to exit the call. Okay. To to prepare for my next meeting, um, but if you sent this. Um, you know, I certainly will review it tonight <laughs> once I get done with my my other meeting. It should oh, be attached to your agenda. Okay. All yeah. right. Then I have it. I just haven't I haven't reviewed it. Yeah, that's thanks for these coming new out. Thanks agendas for making with time the, at your conference. With the blue line, that's a hyperlink. So when you click on it, it should bring up um, that okay. document. All right. Well, thank you all. Have have a nice evening. Take care, Cynthia. Take okay, care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Zinnia. All right, and this is not, this shouldn't be any. So this is the document in front of you. Hopefully, you can all see it. Um, let me know if you cannot. But I can see it. Okay, great. So this we've already we've already get, given the board uh, an overview of of this strategy at the last meeting. We said that we're going to focus on doing a few things that we think will help us to expend the money and also meet our enrollment targets. Um, so what you see here is in the far left column, a, a general strategy notation, and then what we expect the result of implementing that strategy to be. Um, and then some, some general notes about why, how we think that it will achieve that expected result. The main, the gist of it is that, that we're gonna modify our budget um, a lot of these strategies are aligned to a budget modification that we would make with the state of Missouri. They're going to reach out to us anyway, because as part of the extension, we have to revisit our scope of work and our enrollment targets. And our enrollment number target probably won't change. We're still going to be accountable for, for uh, ensuring around 51 individuals participate in this program. Our budget might change slightly. Uh, we don't know yet because they're looking at all the different needs of various regions. Um, but once they give us our new funds, we'll modify the budget. Um, and, and when we do that, we will look at uh, some, some changes that we think will help us spend down the money faster and also 
uh, enable us to meet our enrollment targets. So one example of those changes is that historically we had been responsible for enrolling a significant number of people in temporary employment positions. It's a key part of the grant, but um, St. Louis County was expected to enroll about 30 uh, plus individuals in temporary employment positions. We haven't seen a, a significant desire among uh, participants that we've done some outreach for and coming into our job center for those kinds of temporary opportunities. Um, we have been placing though individuals in those roles. Uh, I think we had about seven the last count that had officially started uh, some some temporary employment program. And so we're going to continue to pay out of this grant for the wages of those individuals that are currently enrolled in the program. So now we're not ending their employment and they're not unless they, they voluntarily choose to end their own employment. But what we are going to do is use more of our funding for training enrollments. And this is going to be helpful for us because St. Louis County historically, as you all know, um, enroll uses a lot of its resources to support skills based training programs. So we're seeing dislocated workers who are coming into our job center and who have been wanting to participate in training. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change our enrollment targets from temporary employment to um, a significant amount more for the for the training side of the, the program. And then we're going to use WIOA funds and grant funds from this COVID grant. We're going to co co-mingle or, or blend those funds to cover the cost of tuition for skills based training. And because, again, we see a monthly, a steady monthly rate of individuals who are dislocated workers, we, we already have uh, enrollments occurring in that program. So we'll just be leveraging funds from this grant in addition to WIOA as necessary to uh, pay for that training. And so we think that will help us spend money at a faster clip. Um, and we will still allow individuals to enroll in temporary employment opportunities if we see a demand for it. We'll just, um, you know, have a smaller budget available for those those types of opportunities based on what we've observed in, in terms of demand for those services. Um, there's another strategy, which is something we didn't initially implement, which is that we when we first received the budget, we never budgeted for program staff or case management support. And I would say this is uh, this is partially the reason uh, it's not the full reason, but it's partially the reason why we have struggled um, with this program because we didn't have any case manager specifically assigned to to do the support and recruitment for individuals. So we had pro existing program staff and our sub recipient for our adult and dislocated worker program, as well as some staff from St. Louis County assisting with the outreach, the recruitment. But there was no one dedicated staff member. So we've had a meeting with our sub recipient FWCA and said, we expect as part of this uh, revision that we do to a budget that we're going to be able to allow some funding for staff. And that was um, something that they were, I think, happy to hear. And we'll expect that whoever they assign to carry the caseload, the remaining caseload for this program, that that person devotes a substantial portion of their time, if not 100% of their time, to uh, this grant and and moving moving uh, you know doing the, the recruitment the outreach and the case management support for it so we think that attention well first that will help us expend more dollars because we'll, we'll be spending money on on a staff members um, wages and benefits um, but the other piece of that is that it it will assist our enrollments in the program because that person will be exclusively or primarily at least dedicated to to supporting that grant so. We, we haven't made that determination of what that budget looks like yet because we haven't received the modification amount that the state will share with us. But when we do, we're going to build in some budget, uh, at least for, for staffing. And that's, that's a, a difference um, in how we've previously been operating the program. And then um, and another option that we're, we're looking at is, is expending more of our funds on supportive services. A number of the individuals that we've enrolled in this program have demonstrated and, and asked for additional support services. Um, at one point, we helped somebody with some parking passes, I believe. Um, we've had some um, some other requests as well for supportive services. So we're building out a budget and we'll encourage our subrecipient as they determine needs of the participants to use the supportive services uh, budget that we're building into the program as well. Uh, and then fundamentally, the final strategy is just to deepen the network of referral partners we have uh, giving us you know, referring individuals to participate in the program. We know that we're, we're best when we rely on our partners and, and we have a lot of partners in our community. Our WIOA required partners, for instance, some of them are co-located in our job center. 
like Better Family Life operating the MWA program or Job Corps or Youth Build. These are partner organizations that have a steady uh, client base that they serve. And so we want them to help us to make aware, build awareness in the community about the opportunity to participate in this program. And we'll, we'll better leverage that as well. And again, once we have a staff person assigned to manage some of the strategy, we think that will help us with enrollments as well. And so by investing into staff resources, um, modifying the budget to move more of the target enrollments into the training side of the equation and uh, building a budget around supportive services and leveraging our partners, we think we'll expend money at a faster rate and we'll reach our full expenditure requirements by the end of June. But we're gonna maintain vigilance on this program where we meet with our subrecipient on a monthly basis. Um, and so we're gonna be asking for an update each month on this and, and we will make sure that the board continues to be updated on the progress in this grant and our executive committee, because we know we wanna be good stewards of these funds. Uh, my director, Howard, has asked for reports on this grant as well and updates. So we have full attention on this program and moving forward, we're gonna make sure that, that we in, in real time adjust our strategy as needed. But those are some of the things that we expect would, would, would help us. Any, any questions or concerns about what I shared? Well, Greg, I have a question and a comment. Um, well, I'll go with the comment first. I mm -hmm. am just elated to hear that we are going to add a training component because I think of quality rather qu than quantity as far as numbers are concerned. And that will really help from a soft skills perspective or skills-based training. I think that's awesome. My question is around the program staff. Uh, I'm assuming from what I'm looking at, it's going to be one person. Is that correct? So it'll be, so the goal is to have one person who is dedicated to the grant, but we do have, as I mentioned, other staff that are, are already working on this grant. So, you know, our compliance director for FWCA, for instance, does a lot of the review for enrollments. Uh, Dr. Manning does then approvals for those enrollments. And we have some of our business services staff, including Derek Collins and Ryan uh, Pierce, as well as Brandon Bryant, who are also helping to support the grant and do some of the outreach for it. But I would say that the change would be that we actually budget funds for a staff member to primarily own this grant, because otherwise it's been pretty diffused across different different staff members, right? So mm -hmm. that's the difference. And will this person, what, uh, from this, is this a collaborative relationship with the folks that you mentioned, or is, uh, is there oversight? How will they fit within um, the, the county? Or will they be with Family yeah. Centers of America? Yeah, they, they will be a staff member from Family Workforce Centers of America because Workforce. we've actually... Yeah, because we, we've actually given, so we receive this grant, but then we in turn, just like we do with a lot of our other programs, we put the scope of work also on our subrecipient to be responsible for um, outcomes here. So we are oversight in this capacity to our subrecipient, but we're asking them to, when they hire staff with their, their modified budgets, to ensure that at least one case manager, at least one program staff, and not their program director, which is currently how, how it's been managed. Their program director, Kofi, has been the one that's, um, and Wally have been most engaged on that side, but we're looking at having a case manager, not necessarily a program director um, who's who's managing the, the, the work of the grant. Okay, got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. Members, I want you to know that um, Greg and Dr. Manning uh, visited with me in my office Monday to go over this strategy. And so my silence equals full support of their plan. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you Director Hayes. Director, um, yeah, I don't have any questions. I'm glad you're focused on it. That's good to hear. All right, well, like I said, there's no vote on this. So we really just wanted to share this with you and get any initial thoughts. If you have any recommended um, uh, additions or changes, oh, I forgot to cover this part, but you all can read it. It's just ways that we're gonna monitor progress. So I talked through some of that, you know, making sure that our monthly meetings with our partners, we get updates that we present progress to our, our board at a quarterly basis. But 
you can take a look at this strategy if you have um, any additional questions. It's again, this is linked to in your agenda that you received from Loris earlier today. So if you want to take some time, look at it, have any additional thoughts, recommendations, feel free to share it with with uh, uh, with me, and I will make sure that by the end of the week we send this out to the board to notify them that here's what our strategy looks like. That you all have reviewed it and added some thoughts um, to this as well. But but otherwise we'll just We'll just go ahead and send it out if we don't see anything more from from all of you, but just wanted to make sure that we followed through on that that promise to the board to provide an update on strategy. I think it's an excellent strategy and I and I again love the incorporation of additional training. I do. Thank you. Hmm. Well, Mr. chair, there's no other uh, business items on the agenda. There was some room for new business or open discussion if committee members want it, but otherwise um, I would say that we can look to get a motion to adjourn. But before we do that, I just want to thank all, all of you again for making time tonight um, and want to give a special shout out to, to, to uh, Loris Williams on our team who's done a heck of a job learning how to um, get these things public noticed on time make sure that we have all the documents together, make sure that we're following all the right procedures. And we want to thank uh, David, who's joined us from the IT side, as well as Ethan um, and Dr. Manning tonight for your time. Just thanks all for, for working to make this happen. But most importantly, to Director Hayes and our committee members, uh, we know how busy you all are, and we appreciate you making sure that this special meeting happened uh, so that we can follow through on our, our commitments to the board. And, and uh, we can now you know, faithfully move forward on a, on a critical business item that we have because of your time tonight. So thank you. From uh, my office and the county exec to our members, thank you very much. Thanks is never enough. I appreciate those expressions and sentiments and I would like to echo them to everyone that has joined on this evening and spent a little extra time tonight to get this passed. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Do we need a motion Thank to adjourn? I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Second that motion. We are adjourned. All righty. Have a Thank great after, uh, evening, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for that evening, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, David and Ethan.